Oh, okay. Uh, so the, the next piece I want to do, I, I mentioned earlier, I talked about, you know, being raised by my grandparents, and my granddad was uh, a hard man to get to know. He was, uh, he didn't laugh a lot, um, and uh, we had a difficult relationship growing up, just because he was not very communic communicative. Um, a good example being, he had a strange sense of humor. Um, I remember going through, I grew up in Yellowknife, went to a Catholic school at a time where they didn't teach anything about sex education in schools, which made puberty very vicious. Uh, and my voice didn't change like it did for a lot of other people over the period of a couple months. I was talking like this, and all of a sudden I started talking like this. And if that happens to you in a Catholic school, they pretty much look at you like, oh, Rosemary's baby. You know, just like, it's more of like a possession type of thing. And I kept wondering, like, what's going on? We're going through all these changes. But the school kept kind of passing the buck, because I'd ask the teacher, and the teacher would be like, talk to the gym teacher. I don't know why the gym teacher, but... Um, and then the gym teacher would be like, talk to the pr principal. And I'd go to, and then finally get sent to the nurse, and the nurse would be like, just go home, ask your parents. And so I remember coming home one day, and, uh, you know, the only, I had just had access to my granddad, so I was like, uh, going through all these changes, um, and I just kind of need someone to level with me. And he folded up his newspaper, puts it in his lap, and he looks at me and says, uh, well, maybe you're turning into a monster. Ever think of that? <laughs> <laughs> and not oh, just kidding, like, that was it. Like, that was, you know. And then, like, he, you know, unruffles his newspaper again and just hides behind it. And he would just let that sit with you and, like, become a scar inside of your life. Um, that was kind of the guy who was... He used to read to me before bed, and his choice of reading material was always kind of skewed. He, uh, he used to read Lord of the Rings to me, which, you know, I guess if you're a certain age, that's cool and stuff. But I was quite young, so hearing about, like, people getting, you know, run through with swords and stuff. That was scary as a kid. And I remember growing up, he, uh, his, his reading list was comprised mostly of Western novels. He loved Louis L'Amour and Zane Grey, things like that. He was really into that. And so I thought, Lord of the Rings just seemed like such an anomaly compared to the rest of your literary diet. Um, and so I asked him about it when I was older. And uh, I was like, why do you like Lord of the Rings so much? And he, he looks at me and he says, well, it's a metaphor. For what? Marriage. <laughs> what? And he's like, think about it. You put on the ring, you're invisible to all your friends. <laughs> the ring slowly drives you mad. And the great eye is always watching. <laughs> like, that's the kind of guy, you know, so... But we didn't, we didn't have a lot of great communication, and there were a lot of times where I would tell him things and I feared him getting angry at me or being upset with me, um, because his anger was quite a display. Um, and it did happen a lot, I grew up with that. Um, but I wanted to do this piece, uh, this was towards, you know, um, he passed away some years ago, and I guess this was in the winter of his life where he started to open up a bit more. And uh, so I wanted to try this one out for you guys. Okay. You can't just do whatever. The words stumbled out of you like a drunk leaving a bar looking for a fresh new last call. You were not a man of words, but did your best to offer me advice you offered me. You can't just do whatever. And I know what you meant. You meant that whatever I choose to do, I must not be aimless. I must not simply spin this globe and go wherever I stick my finger. Because 71% of the time, I will end up in the ocean. And if I do end up in the ocean, I can't just do whatever. I better learn to swim. You can't just do whatever. The conversation came after you asked me about heaven told me that you thought heaven would be specific to each person and that each person would have their own version of it and asked me what mine would be. And I was so scared to tell you. I don't have one. 
But you nodded your head as if confirming a suspicion that perhaps school had robbed me of a belief in some stories. You said, you don't have to believe what I believe. It's enough to be good. Be good. I will. I will think about your heaven. Your heaven would be the same haircut forever. <laughs> It would be a stick, a dog, and some distance. A lawn that always needs mowing. A six pack of pills and their short bottles and your real teeth back. Because your dentures could never master that bottle opening trick that you love to do. The first time you tried it with dentures, I had nightmares for a month because I thought your mouth had fallen off. Your heaven would be Austria before the war. Canada after you met grandma. It would be head cheese sandwiches and blood sausage. Other deli meats that would ensure you would never ever have to entertain dinner guests. And I would never be in danger of having my lunch stolen. Your heaven would be a stash of raisins and problems you could fix with your hands. I remember you tried to fix everything with your hands. I remember the difficult days. I remember the bandages. They looked like blankets, as if your knuckles had all gone off to bed. Walls that looked like they'd said something that got under your skin and were suddenly made to pay for it. I know you were an angry man. Fingertips like spent shotgun shells, bleeding smoke cocktails of gunpowder and singed plastic. You had what some people would call a temper. You loved a good joke, even if it was on you. Something that would crack open the walls of your chest and let the wind tickle your heart just enough to let you know it was still there. You didn't always laugh. You didn't always smile. You did keep a mental ledger of what you called your send flowers list. I remember thinking it was a thank you to those who got you good but learn the truth after my grandmother added a thin layer of sand to your sandwiches because you refused to make your own lunch for work. You told me about it when you picked me up from school that day. You said, Grandma just made the send flowers list. And I asked, because you love her so much? And you said, because I'm gonna kill her. <laughs> of course you didn't. Your version of kill meant two months before winter, having a seamstress take in each of her coats a few inches. So on the first day she needed one, she fumbled with a sudden tightness, and you stood there smiling, then said in between laughs, Honey, I love you no matter how big you get. She did not laugh, and managed to staple your smile back into a straight face when she told all of your friends at work that she had to move into the spare room because you couldn't stop farting at night. Oh. You often asked me, if I had a heaven, what would it be like? And I told you that for such a small word, if is just too big to wrap my belief around. I would not bend to the hypothetical, but wish now that I would have. Even if it was just to ease your mind and the belief that I could be headed to that other place you believed in, I would tell you now how my heaven is here. It was here. In the gentle warfare of your relationship with Grandma, where volleys were traded back and forth like hockey cards between children who didn't care what the stats meant. My heaven would have been someone in grade five finally willing to trade me their fruit roll-up for my tin of sardines. My hell was wondering why. Why would you give me sardines for lunch? My heaven would make you laugh. Because I get the feeling you didn't get to do that very much through my hell, through the night terrors and bloody noses, through the eyes black, bruised back, sneak attack, knapsack, and winter coat hijacks, you did your best to seal up the cracks in my armor and made my heaven here.
I would have loved to have made you laugh more. To make your send flowers list just once. So I offer you now my if. If there is a heaven, mine would have a post office so I could send letters to yours. The first letter would read, hell's not so bad. They pretty much let you do whatever. 